In today's episode of Locked On Oilers, a couple moves over the weekend. How does the signing of Matthias Janmark and Yesapuli RV and Kyler Yamamoto going to arbitration affect the roster? We will talk about that and much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Oilers podcast. I'm your host and former Oilers game day producer, Brett Holden. Yes, as mentioned on today's episode, the Edmonton Oilers made a signing over the weekend and former Vegas Golden Knight, Matthias Janmark. How does he add to the team? Plus, Kyler Yamamoto and Yesa Puliyarvi are off to arbitration. So, what does that do to the roster and what happens next? We will get into that. Plus, we continue with our season report cards with Cody Cece. Quite the season he had. We will go over that a little later on today's episode. Thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and bets than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Alrighty, where we are going to start is over the weekend, the Edmonton Oilers, as I clearly, if you are on the YouTube, uh, uh, fade away here from you, but that is okay. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers signed Matthias Janmark over the weekend from the Vegas Golden Knights. A pretty solid ad for the Edmonton Oilers as they are looking for bottom six depth and a pretty cheap option when uh, Matthias Janmark and is a veteran option as well. The Edmonton Oilers on Sunday signed Matthias Janmark to a one-year, $1.25 million contract from uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Matthias Janmark was actually drafted by Ken Holland uh, initially when he came into the NHLs, had a pretty decent career so far, spent some time in Detroit, spent some time in Dallas, spent some time in Vegas as well. Uh, last season, 67 games played, 9 goals, 16 assists, 25 points. So a guy playing in the bottom six, he was one goal away from that uh, 10 goal mark. He's hit the double digits in goals three times in his career. His career high in goals came in 2017, 2018, where he scored 19 goals. Uh, in that season, and then in 2015-2016, one of the first seasons in his career, he scored 15, uh, I believe that was for Detroit, it might have been for Dallas, I don't quite remember that, but uh, uh, the assists as well, his career high in 2018-2019, with 19 assists and points that same year that he had the most amount of goals in his career, 2017-2018, he finished with 30 Four points. So a guy who can do it in the NHL, as he has proven over the last X amount of years, I believe he's been in the uh, league for about seven years now off the top of my head. I don't have his stats in front of me anymore, naturally. But uh, yeah, a very solid ad for the Edmonton Oilers at a very solid price point. Matthias Janmark coming over from the Vegas Golden Knights. He's a guy who is a bottom six specialist, but can also kill penalties. He killed penalties while he was out in Vegas as well and has experience with that. Last year, he had an 8.53 goals against per 60 minutes. Uh, short-handed, which would have been good for 12th on the team, which was actually greater than Darnell Nurse, Derek Ryan, and Devin Shore. Now, why do I mention Derek Ryan and Devin Shore? Those, like, very odd names to try and sound impressive about. Well, Derek Ryan and Devin Shore were brought in specifically for those penalty-killing type situations, bottom six type of situations, and last year, the Edmonton Oilers weren't exactly the best when it came to the penalty kill. However, when it got into the playoffs, that was one of the things that kind of saved their tails a couple of times in some big games. And maybe Matthias Janmark can be the guy to kind of help, especially that forward group, to kill some penalties. Again, Derek Ryan and Devin Shore were brought in for that spot and weren't exactly fantastic at it. You bring in Matthias Janmark's experience and skill, and you take a look at the numbers from a team who wasn't exactly that fantastic either in the Vegas Golden Knights, didn't make the playoffs last year, as I will uh, continuously uh, bring up. But uh, yeah, didn't make the playoffs last year still, 
Uh, Matthias Janmark would have been one of the one of the better Edmonton Oilers uh, this past season on the penalty kill. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast for a little bit, you know that I do love my goals for and goals against per uh, 60 minutes. So let's take a look at those numbers for Matthias Janmark last season in Vegas. In all situations, Matthias Janmark had a 2.62 goals for per 60 minutes in all situations, which would have been good for 17th on the Edmonton Oilers. So eh, again, a bottom six guy, not really there for points. But he does have that established uh, career in being able to put up at least double digits three times in his career. Uh, also at five on five, 2.3 goals, four per 60 minutes, which would have been good for 18th on the Oilers. So not too fantastic offensively, but still has the skill. Uh, in all situations, when it comes to goals against per 60 minutes, he would have been 12th on the team for the Edmonton Oilers with a 2.96 Goals against per 60, which was actually higher than Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Cody Cece, and Evan Bouchard. Three rather, well, two of them are defensemen, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins is a two-way defensive-minded forward. So those are pretty decent, impressive numbers, especially when you compare them to guys who are supposed to be preventing the puck from going in. Uh, and then at 5-on-5, five five, he had a 2.48 goals against per 60 minutes, which was actually tied with Ryan Nugent Hopkins, which would have been 7th on the Edmonton Oilers. So, Matthias Janmark, very interesting ad for the Edmonton Oilers, a guy who is experienced, a guy who uh, is experienced not only in the NHL, but also experienced with Ken Holland. As mentioned, Kenny Holland did draft him initially coming into the league. Some experience there, some trust there as well from the uh, higher ups in the organization so a great ad for the Edmonton Oilers so where does he fit well with two Edmonton Oilers now going to arbitration in Kyler Yamamoto and Yesapoy RV there are some things up in the air so what does the roster look like right now what do the Oilers have to play with and could the Edmonton Oilers be moving anybody out we will talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to tell you a little bit more about our partners over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL. Okay, now I know that I'm, I'm starting off weird because we're in the offseason. But we're taking a look. You can take a look at the NHL Futures for the conference winners. Yes, the conference winners. Right now, the Edmonton Oilers sit at third in the Western Conference behind, okay, Colorado, fair enough. They're at a, a plus 175. But the Vegas Golden Knights have better odds to win the Western Conference than the Edmonton Oilers? I'm sorry, Bet Online. You mean the team that didn't even make the playoffs and haven't really added anybody other than trade Max Pacioretty? Don't know about that one. A uh, plus tonight is uh, actually the home run derby is tonight. Uh, the MLB uh, uh, all-star game, the most important all-star game in all of the four major sports is being played tomorrow night on Tuesday night. So you can actually throw a bet on that as well. Bet online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and much more. More and betonline.net uh, remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports events and uh, news, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game. where we are going to continue by the way if you are watching on youtube if you haven't uh, uh uh subscribed to the youtube yet and you're taking a look over the shoulder you're going huh those are those are different jerseys well yeah you're right these are some different jerseys good eye in fact this one back here isn't even an oilers jersey it's now an edmonton oiler as i move the mic down so you can see it a little better how about that 
That is a 2014 Texas Stars jersey for Jack Campbell. Yes, Jack Campbell, the Edmonton Oilers' newest goaltender. Yeah, I, I had a Jack Campbell Texas Stars jersey. Now, I know I've been one of those very vocal people who have said, yeah, Jack, Jack Campbell's not the guy for the Edmonton Oilers. But I've also been very vocal in the fact that I've always liked Jack Campbell and I liked him as a person and liked him as a goaltender. And that's why. I've always liked Jack Campbell. Didn't think he was going to be the guy for the Oilers, but I am perfectly content and happy with it. Also, over on the other shoulder as well is Linus Omark. How about that? A little Linus Omark love. Didn't think you would wake up to a Monday and see a Linus Omark jersey today, did ya? You're welcome. Happy Monday, everybody. Alrighty, let's move on to the lines for the Edmonton Oilers. And now what? For the Edmonton Oilers, as mentioned, yes, RV and Kyler Yamamoto are on their way to arbitration. So what does that mean for the Edmonton Oilers? What does that mean for the lines of the Edmonton Oilers? What does that mean for the current players of the Edmonton Oilers? Well, as of right now, if the uh, season were to start, and let's just say Kyler Yamamoto and yes, a RV sign. Let's just say, let's just say they sign their tender contract. The lines for the Edmonton Oilers going into game one or day one of the season would be Evander Kane, Connor McDavid, and Kyler Yamamoto on the first line, depending on how you want to configure the first line, of course. Uh, then th these are this is based off of some people on Twitter as well. Just want to uh, let you know that this isn't necessarily my lines, just some lines that have been suggested by other Oilers fans around uh, 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 the internet. But uh, the second line, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, uh, uh, Leon Dreisaitl, and Zach Hyman. Honestly, I'd flip Hyman and Nugent Hopkins, but it is what it is. The third line of Dylan Holloway, Ryan McLeod, and Yessa Puliarvi has the potential to be a very solid third line. And then on that fourth line, we have Warren Fogle, Derek Ryan, and Matthias Janmark. Very solid fourth line, if you ask me, especially considering on that fourth line, you have Warren Fogle, who are you who you are paying as the Edmonton Oilers at $2.75 million. Uh, on defense, the Edmonton Oilers have Darnell Nurse, Cody Ceci, Brett Kulak, Evan Bouchard, uh, uh, Philip Broberg, Tyson Berry, and then I threw in uh, Marcus Niemelainen. Some people have uh, Slater Cuckoo in there. I think Marcus Niemelainen would be the preferred spot because he can skate, he can move the puck, and he can hit like a full-on bulldozer. Uh, as mentioned numerous times, uh, uh, Marcus Niemelainen only played, I believe, 10 games for the Edmonton Oilers this past season, and he still stood in the top five of the Edmonton Oilers in hitting, just in 10 games at 81. So uh, pretty decent, if you ask me. Uh, and then, of course, you have Jack Campbell and Stuart Skinner in net for the Edmonton Oilers. So what now? Well, the Edmonton Oilers are currently sitting at about $5.7 in cap space because of the LTIR with Mike Smith and Oscar Clefbaum. Technically, right now, they are over the cap uh, limit, but again, the Edmonton Oilers do have about... With uh, 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 Mike Smith and Oscar Clefbaum being on LTIR at the same time, they have about $6 million in cap space after they go over the cap uh, to work with as well. So right now, they are sitting at 5.7. Now, the thing is, is as this hypothetical was a hypothetical, the Edmonton Oilers still have to go to arbitration with Kyler Yamamoto and Yessa Puliyarvi. So what will they get? We shall see. But... Does that mean now the Edmonton Oilers have to move some pieces in order to not only uh, resolve the, the deal with Kyler Yamamoto and Yesa Puliyarvi, plus they also have to re-sign Ryan McLeod as well for the Edmonton Oilers. So that's about three, at the least, three and a half million dollars right there at the least. That is on the low, low, low end. Um, so the Edmonton Oilers at, at that $5.7 million cap space don't really sit too comfy or too pretty going into or uh, coming out of those arbitration talks. So, who's available? Well, everybody seems to be pointing the finger at Warren Fogle, as I've mentioned already, who's sitting at a $2.75 million cap hit on the fourth line, a guy who has had some finishing issues, and some people just straight up say, if you're not going to come out here and score, 
especially in the bottom six, a guy, Warren Fogle also doesn't play on the penalty kill, also doesn't play on the power play. So what are you coming out here to do? Well, question. Uh, and then Tyson Berry as well, who's sitting on that third pairing, but has a four and a half million dollar cap hit. That's pretty hefty. So let's just say in theory, the Edmonton Oilers were to move Tyson Berry just straight up, get picks, whatever, recoup uh, uh, some picks for him. Well, the Edmonton Oilers, with that $5.7 million in cap space right now, they were to move that $4.5 million contract off of uh, the books in Tyson Berry. They'd be sitting at two or $10.3 million in cap space. Now and then, if they, on top of it, moved the Warren Fogle contract, which sits at a $2.75 million cap hit per year, the Edmonton Oilers all of a sudden would have $13.05 million in cap. Hmm. Now, again, are you willing to move a Warren Fogle to get what exactly? That is the thing. What exactly? Now the Edmonton Oilers have signed Matthias Janmark. So that is one of the bottom six guys. Do they go after Sonny Milano? Still, I think they do. That would very much shore up the bottom six and make the Edmonton Oilers have one of the scariest forward groups in the entire league. But now what? The Ed How much does Sonny Milano cost you? Is he north of two and a half, north of $3 million? Is he worth what a Dylan Strom went for? Maybe not. But he may be looking at the market and saying, hey, that, that's what I need. Well, you're basically replacing Warren Fogle with a more expensive. Not, I'm not going to compare Sonny Milano to Warren Fogle, but you're basically just sending out a contract to spend more money. Makes sense. But uh, what do you do there in regards to the forwards? Now, my, me personally, and this may be me living in my fantasy world. I know I may get some uh, backlash from it, but the Edmonton Oilers made a deal with the team last year for an aging defenseman and for a team that really did not see themselves having much of a season, much of a future past this year, really. That was the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, they made a trade for Duncan Keith, and look how well that worked out. The Edmonton Oilers made it to the Stanley Cup uh, Western Conference Finals a lot of, with a lot of the help to do with that uh, aging defenseman in Duncan Keith. Well, Duncan Keith came from the Chicago Blackhawks, who, once again this offseason, seemed to be in absolute... Uh, I can't even say rebuilding mode. I don't know what they're doing. But then you have a guy in Patrick Kane, who, let's be real, he's 33 years old, isn't done with his, his, his career, but isn't willing, or most likely isn't willing, to sit there and go, okay, yeah, I'll lose a couple just to maybe make a push near the end of our career. Patrick Kane currently sits at a $10.5 million cap hit. And while the Chicago Blackhawks have a lot, a lot of salary cap to deal with, can the Edmonton Oilers maybe swing a deal that involves Chicago retaining a little bit of salary? The Oilers sending a couple prospects, maybe a pick or two that they recoup in a trade for a Warren Fogle for a Tyson Berry. And have a first line, the Vander Kane, Hunter McDavid, Patrick. I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out there. If the Edmonton Oilers do end up making a move on both Tyson Berry and Warren Fogle, that clears up $13.05 million in cap space. Patrick Kane only has only, I say in tongue-in-cheek, a ten and a half million dollar cap hit. The Edmonton Oilers can get the Chicago Blackhawks to retain even three point three million dollars and make it uh, maybe even three million dollars and make it a seven point five million dollar cap hit. That's something the Edmonton Oilers do. Is that something realistic? I don't know. What would you do? 
with all this uh, potential cap space with the Edmonton Oilers? Would you just stand pat with the Edmonton Oilers, get your RFAs dealt with, and move on? I want to know what you would do with the Edmonton Oilers roster right now. Again, the Edmonton Oilers have about $5.7 million in cap space. Kyler Yamamoto and Yesa Puliyarvi are off to arbitration, so that'll probably go down. They also have to re-sign Ryan McLeod. What would you do? What could the Edmonton Oilers do? Oh, uh, that's where we will call, uh, well, the off-season part of uh, today's conversation. Let's move on to well, last season for a certain player. As, uh, as the Edmonton Oilers brought in Cody Ceci last year, a lot of people went, oh my god, Cody Ceci? Really? That's the best you're going to get? Well, Cody Ceci ended up being a top-pairing defenseman for the Edmonton Oilers, so how did he get there last season? We will get to that in just a second, but first, which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Hmm. Yes, starting July 18th, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers over at Bet Online. Available July 18th on the Locked On NFL Network, wherever you find your podcast. And it's up on YouTube as well. I woke up, I was flipping through Twitter today, and I saw the first, I think it was the first five or ten, and I was honestly quite shocked. So uh, if you're, you, you probably, you may be running a couple of fantasy football leagues, as I am too, so uh, uh, you might want to peep, take a peep at that because... There are some pretty interesting names already. A lot of movement within the NFL as well in regards to talent and stuff. So, uh, pretty interesting list there. Alrighty. Let's move on to Cody Ceci as we move into... I know we haven't had a, a season report card in a little while. Well, let's... Let's be real, we've had a little bit of a busy week last week with the Edmonton Oilers. So uh, let's get right back into the season report cards with Cody Ceci. The Edmonton Oilers signed him last year from the Pittsburgh Penguins. And a lot of people went, oh, Cody Ceci? Really? That's the best you can do? I mean, I, I have a lot of, uh, well, I have a couple of Toronto Maple Leafs friends. And they were like, what are you guys doing? What a stupid move. Ottawa Senators fans going, uh, do you know who you just signed? But then all the Pittsburgh Penguins fans were going, oh, take care of him, please. All the best to Cody in his career, and we're really going to miss him. You go, okay, so what's, what's different here? What's, what's going on? Why are Pittsburgh, Pan Pittsburgh Penguin fans so reminiscent of the times they had with Cody Cease? Toronto and Ottawa fans want to burn them at the stake, which, to be fair, most players who go through Toronto basically have to go through that fire itself. But uh, Cody CC came into the Edmonton Oilers with not a lot of expectations, plus the Edmonton Oilers also traded for, if you haven't heard, uh, Duncan Keith. And they started the season together. It was a Duncan Keith-Cody CC pairing, and a lot of people were going there going, oh my, what do you do? What are you doing? Well, I would say it worked out. <laughs> I would say it really worked out for Cody Ceci, especially last year. 78 games played for the Edmonton Oilers. Five goals, 23 assists, 28 points for Cody Ceci. You'd sometimes see his name on the score sheet and you go, oh, oh. I think at one point he had a three-point game, if I'm not mis mistaken. He definitely had one in the playoffs against the uh, uh, LA Kings as well. In the playoffs, 16 games played, played all 16 for the Oilers. One goal, six, six, seven, six assists, excuse me, and seven points. So, weirdly offensively productive for uh, Cody Ceci. Not exactly what you expected from a guy like Cody Ceci. But again, as mentioned, he started off on the second pairing with Duncan Keith. Halfway through the season, well, mostly since February 10th, when Jay Woodcroft stepped in, Cody Ceci became a little bit of a different player and became uh, an, an absolute shutdown defenseman. Probably the Edmonton Oilers' best shutdown defenseman on the roster. So much so, a lot of people are sitting there very confident in Cody Ceci being 
a top pairing defenseman for the Edmonton Oilers. Now, if you went to a lot of people last summer and said, hey, Cody Ceci is going to be your top pairing defenseman and you're going to like it. People are, a lot of Edmonton Oilers fans are going to say, get out of my face, you crazy guy. That's not going to happen. Well, that's exactly what happened. And now Cody Ceci, especially taking look, uh, taking a look at what he did last year, has been very solid for the Edmonton Oilers. Now let's pull up my favorite stats of all time, the goals for and goals uh, against per 60 minutes. And in all situations, when you take a look at it, pretty... Um, uh, run of the mill, I guess. Pretty, uh, pretty decent. Two point seven two goals for for per sixty minutes for Cody Cece, which was good for sixteenth on the team. Again, a, a guy who's mostly a defensive defenseman, so you're not really expecting too much in all situations for uh, Cody Cece. However, three point two eight goals against per sixty which was good for 19th on the team. Not fantastic. A 5v5, or at 5 on 5, uh, he had a 2.43 goals for per 60 minutes, which was good for 18th. At 5 on 5, goals against at a 2.7, which was good for 17th. And shorthanded. Now, that is the thing, especially when it comes to those numbers in all situations where you go, oh, okay, his number is much higher than that 5-on-5. Uh, five five. Well, that's because Cody Ceci also played on the penalty kill for the Oilers and had a 7.16 goals against per 60 minutes, which was good for 8th on the team for the Oilers. A guy who can go out and do a bunch of things in all situations for the Edmonton Oilers, and the Edmonton Oilers can feel... Pretty comfortable in doing so. Now, as I mentioned, I really pumped him up. He became the Edmonton Oilers' top pairing defenseman. And that really shone, for me especially, but those numbers, those extra numbers in the goals for and goals against per 60 kind of mediated, mediated it a bit, a little bit for me. So, Cody Cece, your final grade for last season is... A B plus. We'll give you a B plus. I think again, Cody CC came in with very little uh, expectations, and a lot of people weren't very happy about it. Came in and excelled for the Edmonton Oilers. Excited to see what he will do for the Oilers next season. Alrighty, let's call it there. Hopefully, for tomorrow, we will have another move for us to talk about from the Edmonton Oilers and Kenny Holland. But for now, thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. Now, for your second listen, make sure you tune in to Locked On NHL as Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked on NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. Alrighty, let's call it there. Yes, we have a couple new backgrounds if you are up on YouTube and watching on YouTube. We got the Jack Campbell jersey, as that will be staying now that he's an Edmonton Oiler. The blue line is Omark over here. We got uh, we got a little bit of a special one as well that will be on uh, the couch for uh, the next episode. But you'll have to tune in for that tomorrow. For now, I hope you enjoy this beautiful weather as I normally say that and it starts raining. So enjoy it while it's not raining, people. Alrighty, stay safe, have a good one, and don't do anything I wouldn't do.